All right, so today we are slumping, and I'm doing a series of slumping because once I pull out all of my stuff, I don't just slump one piece, I slump a bunch of them. Um, so the next piece I'm going to slump is what I call our medium serving tray. And these are trays that I actually picked up when I bought out another pottery studio and she was also slumping and I got these. I actually had some and had broken mine so I was really happy to get these back and I have not been able to find them since so I'm happy to have these. Um, just to let you know we are now offering classes here for the first time at Salvaterra Pottery and Woodworks and we are in Weaverville, North Carolina. We're offering two beginning classes and one intermediate class. Um, it's right now for two hour classes just to kind of get you rolling and we'll be adding more and more advanced classes as students kind of move up and um, develop their skills. So just to let you know that. So let's get started on our medium serving tray and trying to think, nope, need to put a little WD-40 down. So I've already slumped a little bit so I'm not putting as much as I usually put down if I'm just getting started because the countertop is already kind of slick, but it needs a little extra. And I always like to try to predict how much clay I need. This is going to be too much, but this is what I'm going to start with. And I like to stick it down on the counter and then use the clay to move the WD-40 around. Um, so I don't have to get it on my hands. I just don't like the feel. Of oil on my hands not just WD-40 but no oil <laughs> kind of one of my quirks okay so there we go and this also gets the uh, clay nice and slick too so I'm gonna start out and just see where we are with width we're almost at the right width for um, this tray so I'm gonna turn it this way and pound it down a little bit So that is probably as, yeah, it's plenty wide now. So I pound it down just because it's an easier way to start when you're starting with a thick slab. It's just easier to bang it down some and then move to rolling. So that's what I did. All right, so I'm going to turn it the other way because this is going to be the long way of the, um, of the tray. And so, oh, one other thing. I, on one of my last videos, I said I don't like anything too flat because... If you get a really like long rim here and it's really really flat as it goes through the firing process it's just going to slump down so this is about as flat as i want to see it it comes up and then it goes out and it goes out i don't know maybe about an inch and a half and that's about as far as i push it when it's as flat as that um, is so when you're looking for trays that's just you know that's always something I look at is what it does this room look like because I want it to be a really nice form okay so let's get rolling I'm going to bang a little bit more okay here we go and let's flip so we flip to prevent warping because we want both sides of the clay to have this roll wing pin on it so it doesn't all go just one way so let's flip again try to stay on your little sticks over here so you don't get too thin mine are one oh probably a little bit more than a quarter of an inch because I like my trays to be about a quarter of an inch thicker if they are bigger a little thinner if they are smaller and um, these are a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch because if I have to fudge because I didn't get enough clay I can take the sticks away and make it a little thinner all right so we've got a nice slab all the particles are running this way on the slab because I've spent a good amount of time rolling them out. We've got a nice smooth even even thickness. So let's grab our tray 
and I like to scoop underneath of it and lift and I move my tray over and lay it down and then I have plenty of excess so this is a really good easy slab to work with so I'm just kind of lifting up the edges and compressing it in towards the piece a little bit um, just so when I start stretching the clay out to form the shape it's not stretching too much okay so here we go around with my sponge and I like some definition in slab work I feel like if you just kind of let it just kind of slump and not really make some definition like this groove in the edges there it just feels like something is missing and so I lifted this up because I could see that there was air trapped under there so I lifted up and out comes the air all right so let's get our edges and as usual I'm playing Daughtry he's my favorite artist I like to play him we play other stuff in the studio too but when I'm by myself Daughtry's my man all right so let's get our needle tool and cut down in and slowly go around with our needle tool vertical all the way around like that this clay here goes to the pug mill and we will turn in it it into some beautiful piece who knows what and then I like to go around my edges. I'm compressing. You want to compress these edges because if it's going to crack, one of the places it will consider cracking is where these edges are. That's the reason it's good to have excess clay so it doesn't crack into um, the piece when you're rolling it out. And then a nice compressed edge. And then, of course, once this comes out, and it'll come out of the tray when I can actually hold up my hand and it holds its form. So leather hard, maybe even a little bit past, is when I uh, do that. So come back. I'm going to cut that like I usually do because I'm not happy with that at all. So I have a bunch of cookie cutters. This is a round one, and this is how I generally do it. I generally uh, take a cookie cutter and cut my edge like that and then work at centering it eyeball there is nothing perfect in nature and my pots are not perfect either and i don't strive for them to be perfect because uh, i just i think every piece should be unique and if it has a little bit of you know something not perfect i'm okay with that because it's man-made or woman-made let's say all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna clean up this edge to make it look like the other one and the good news is my handle that I put on here will actually cover up some of that nobody will know that I tried something different and didn't like it and then clean that one off I will be back at the end of all my slumping what I usually do is I slump all my pieces and then that same day I come back and I put handles on them after I get everything slumped so I'm going to go ahead and score where these handles are going to go right there and usually I like to go ahead and stick my slip on it just because then I can just go boom 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 with all of getting my handles on so it's all prepared for the handle to go on it okay so we're going to set this one aside and I'm going to keep slumping and so let me give you a close-up this is what it looks like and it's getting ready for its handles and so this is my medium serving tray and I will show you the finished product as I always try to do at the end of the video so um, that is it for medium serving trays I hope that you learned something and we will see you later my friends